This video will show you how to import a survey into Envivo. It's first important that you set your data up correctly, and if you need help doing this, the previous video shows you how to do this. When importing your data into Envivo, the first step is to make sure you have the file closed in Excel. As you've seen in the previous video, we had to slightly edit the file and so had to Excel open. If I now try to import it into Envivo, Envivo won't be able to edit the file because Excel is still using it, so make sure you close Excel first. With Excel closed, I'm now able to start. I'm heading to Files under the Data area, and in this white open area, I'm going to right click and choose Import from Survey. You can see there are direct import options for SurveyMonkey and Qualtrics. If you're using one of these tools, you can follow these dialog boxes to import your data. If you've used any other survey tool or manually prepared your data, we will need to use a text file or Microsoft Excel file. In the previous video, we used GISC Online Surveys and imported into a Microsoft Excel file. So I'm going to choose this. A new Explore window will open, allowing you to select your data. Once you've done this, you can click Open and the Survey Import Wizard will open. The first screen of this wizard explains what it's going to do. So first of all, your respondents will be stored as cases. So each individual row of your survey will be assigned to a unique case. This will match the respondent ID that you specified. So for me, this will be respondent 1, respondent 2, respondent 3, and so on. Close-ended questions, that is, questions with a finite number of responses, such as a Likert scale, strongly agree to strongly disagree, or a yes-no question, will be stored as attributes. So, for example, if I've asked my participants a yes or no question, the information for that will be stored as a case attribute. And then finally, our open-ended questions, where participants are given a free choice of what to type or say, are stored as codes. This enables us to easily analyse the data once the survey is imported. All of this will be explained in further detail once we get the survey in. So now that we've selected our data and the survey import wizard has opened, we can click next. The first screen of this wizard clarifies our data format. It asks you, first of all, how many rows are used for your question headers? In the previous video, we just used row one. So we can leave this at one and it's previewing the data to show what it looks like. And we can see correctly that this gray row responds to the questions. If you have any dates in your question, you can also specify the date order here. As we've got more complicated dates here, this doesn't apply for this particular data. I can now click next. The next screen of this survey import wizard asks us to manage your survey respondents. The first question asks where you'd like to store your cases. You will notice the wizard will automatically create a new folder that corresponds to your survey file name. For me, this is a little bit messy, so I'm going to choose change location. I can then click on cases and choose create folder. I'm going to call this folder survey respondents. Now that I've created the new folder, I can select it and click OK. The next question is select a unique ID for each of your cases. As you'll recall in the previous video, I created a new column called respondent and then labeled each of my cases slash respondents down as respondent one, two, three, four, and so on. For this reason, I can leave this at the pre-selected value of respondent. While it will let me select another value, it's generally easier to keep this as the first column in your data. Finally, this page notes that cases will be grouped together in a classification and that new classification can be named here. I'm happy to leave this at survey respondent, so I'm going to click next. This final screen of the survey import wizard is really important. It asks us to identify open-ended and closed-ended questions. You have to get this right at the survey import stage, otherwise the only way to correct this is to re-import your survey. 
This is because of how the data is stored and it's not possible to edit it afterwards. So take your time here and get this right. Envivo will look at your data and try to determine which questions are open and which are closed. I can see, however, there are some errors in its interpretation. For example, looking down my list of questions, I can see that question 4a is specified as a closed-ended question. However, this is an open question. Participants were asked if you specified other, please specify, and given a box to type in. So, for this particular question, I need to switch it from closed-ended to open-ended. I can also see a later question, if you selected other, please specify, again has been mapped as closed and needs to be switched to open-ended. At this point, you can also edit any of these questions if you want to. You could maybe condense the titles or renumber them if that helps. Because I've used JISC Online surveys, I can see I've got this letter A in at this level that's not required, so I'm going to remove this to tidy my data. Now that I've tweaked my questions, I'm ready to click finish and this will start processing everything we've specified in the survey import wizard. So first it brings the data in. It creates cases for each of the survey respondents. It will then create case attributes for the close-ended questions and create codes for the open-ended questions. I'm going to click close and you'll see under files, my survey is now in there and has now opened ready for me to analyze and view. The next video will explain in much more detail what the survey import wizard has done.